freedom and grace be with you. My name is John Clifton of the Libertarian Party of New York. I'm pleased to have as my guest on Hard Fire this week uh, Scott M. X. Turner, of a coordinator or the coordinator that is of uh, Fans for Fair Play, it's a grassroots organization, and we're going to be talking this week about the twin issues of stadiums, uh, corporate welfare, eminent domain or land grabs uh, as they pertain to this city and uh, the efforts of several politicians and businesses to um, either line their pockets or line their careers by uh, disenfranchising taxpayers or property owners uh, in exchange for implanting their own pet projects uh, in the in the midst of downtown Brooklyn and midtown Manhattan. I'd like um, Scott to, to have you explain a bit about your organization and what you're after doing. Um, but first, we're going to go to the, the first segment here, which is the, um, to, for, everybody, for everybody's attention uh, to know, is the Net Stadium in Brooklyn. Uh, so Scott, could you go ahead and explain your organization. Fans for Fair Play is a community organization made up of and for sports fans. And it was formed just about the same time that Bruce Ratner was announcing this colossal deal to basically destroy Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of questions from a sports fan perspective about what this was going to do to the community, what it was going to mean for fans, and we wanted to know why we had been chosen for this thing to be, be piggybacked on top of, why we were one of what became very clear very quickly, two groups that Bruce Ratner and Marty Markowitz, mm -hmm. the mayor, the governor, Ch Chuck Schumer, were targeting. One group would be the working poor of Brooklyn. The other group was sports fans, both counted on for their mm -hmm undying love, the tacit approval of these projects. Yeah. Well, what, how would you uh, rate yourself as, in terms of, in the, in the, the, under the set of organizations that have tried to influence the issue uh, in, in Brooklyn? Uh, there's another organization called Develop Don't Destroy Brooklyn and other um, grassroots groups that are against these kind of land grabs. Um, how would, why your organization, does it exist as a separate entity from them or them from you? There are a lot of groups who are opposed to this thing. There are dozens of community groups or members of community boards, elected mm -hmm. officials, clergy, um, even union members who are against this kind of thing. Where would fans for fair play fit in? I think um, because we focus on sports um, and the sports fan perspective, we kind of are off on one level, um, right. but we work hand in hand with um, a lot of the organizations. We're a sister organization with Develop Don't Destroy Brooklyn and Prospect right. Heights Action Coalition and others. Yeah, I think it's a unique uh, niche to have to be a fan organization. It's pro-fan, and you, you're supporters of the net, supporters of other um, New York teams, but you don't necessarily subscribe to the anything goes thing uh, about how they uh, develop uh, new facilities. Um, well, let's talk about the issue of land grabbing. Um, who is being injured by the um, development uh, proposed by Ratner? It's kind of who isn't would be a quicker way to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, people who live in the immediate area are impacted because they'll be hit with eminent domain abuse. Mm -hmm. The government will be taking their homes, their businesses, their jobs, mm -hmm. not for a public project, a hospital or road, but they'll be taking it for a private developer, a filthy rich one at that, yeah. a Clevelander with no sense of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. who's going to come in here and build this monstrous development of 17 buildings in one arena. That's the first group. Uh, the second group of the people of Prospect Heights, Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, Park Slope, people who are going to be impacted by 10 to 15 years of construction, mm -hmm. whose lives will be turned upside down. Fort Greene will be completely separated by this project from Prospect Heights. Um, people will be victims by secondary di displacement, the people who won't be able to afford to live there anymore. My wife, my two dogs, and I had to move out because uh -huh. Prospect Heights was too expensive. You know, so you have the secondary displacement. And finally, taxpayers mm -hmm. throughout the city and state are affected. Yep. Um, from the point of view of libertarians who are, as you may know, are behind this kind of program, uh, we've always thought of this kind of issue, eminent domain abuse, abuse, as a kind of bridge issue because it, it allows us to appeal to both major constituencies um, politically that are out there, the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, it, it used to be when the little guy got stepped on, Democrats would run in because that's their model. They're, they're the party that helps the little guy uh, against the big interests out there. Uh, Republicans uh, are the party traditionally that their rallying cry was get rid of waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, so here you got a situation, in the latest situation with the Nets, 
where the little guy gets stepped on and it's by the government uh, through a government um, connected project and where are most of the Republicans? Where are the most of the Democrats to help this little guy out who's being uh, evicted, evicted from their own property that they own uh, by people who want to build a, a stadium that uh, has may or may not have positive value for the community, but at any rate shouldn't be at the expense of uh, the people who are actually living there. Well, you know, anyone who's paying attention knows that um, the people who are living there are the least of the mayor and the governor's concerns. Yeah. And that's always been the case. It's certainly that way in everything that goes on in this city. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we feel is that this city is being run the way someone would run a Fortune 500 company. It's about growth, growth, growth. It's not about making the city a place for people to live yeah. and, 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 and know each other. It's about making sure that profits are derived for some imaginary set of, of, of shareholders. I mean, you have a business person who actually wasn't a very good business person outside of one, you know, um, financial sector invention he came up with um, running the city and he's a one-trick pony when it comes to this he's big massive developments and um, it's certainly hurting the people of Brooklyn and uh, as far as elected officials because it's such a democratically controlled city um, it's not really an issue for us what where you are on the political spectrum like you said there are so many issues there's so many things wrong with these projects any one of which should waylay the projects for good that almost anybody is interested in talking about this and almost anybody once they find out all the facts are going to come out against it and it's just a matter of getting the facts out to people yeah and just before i forget the point that one of the other ish, issues about this that um, intrigue pro-liberty people in general is th that eminent domain is something um, libertarians have opposed even when it's for hospitals or for uh, public use because we don't think uh, that people are getting their just compensation uh, for the land that's being taken and we just don't like the idea of force being applied to uh, yank property from under people. The second issue we've been interested in is opposing corporate welfare which is where most of welfare money is um, sent to businesses. Uh, and this kind of thing, eminent domain abuse, uh, on behalf of businesses is like an evil merge of the two concepts as far as uh, freedom is concerned. Uh, we would much rather people got to voluntarily cut deals to, you know, to sell their property you know, in order to get a good fair market return on their um, of the investment that they had made um, because they have business and growth interests too in, in, as property owners. Um, but, but let me ask you, where does the struggle actually stand right now in terms of the, the residents versus the city? I, I, my understanding was there was a memorandum of understanding recently. Yeah, a mem memorandum of understanding is a document that is sort of signed by the main parties to the deal, in this case the city, the state, and Forest City Ratner, the developer. Um, it's a non-binding agreement legally. It has numbers that are completely un uh, unverifiable and actually, to be quite honestly, incredibly low-balled in terms of the amount of public money to be spent. Mm -hmm. um, independent studies show that instead of the $200 million that the city is saying that they're, and the state are going to spend, it's going to be upwards of anywhere from 500 to 500 million to a billion dollars. It's, so it's a non-binding agreement that sort of says, okay, now we're running with the thing. Uh -huh. But the problem with these things is that you have, um, you have two memorandums of understanding with the Jet Stadium, which we can talk about in the next segment. Mm -hmm. And clearly, things are happening now that weren't covered in those agreements. So when people hear this idea that, well, this MOU has been signed and it's mm -hmm. a done deal and it's something that the Ratner people have been putting out for the better part of a year, it's a done deal. It's not a done deal. Mm -hmm. um, so where it stands with the MOU is that, well, yeah, it happened. Now we're into the next stage of the struggle, which is to um, do environmental, environmental impact studies, mm -hmm. deal with those scoping studies, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the nitty-gritty kind of stuff that you have to do if you're trying to stop a project, or better yet, make the project something that works for the whole community. Right. Um, I think um, one thing to avoid, this is a point of tactics, is the concept of just going to these, these hearings where they do the feasibility studies and discuss how things are going to um, affect the environment. Uh, and then take input from the residents and, and, and activists around the area. Um, sometimes it serves some good in order to change the outcome, but other times it's a dog and pony show that was meant to simply legitimize what the city planned to do anyway. Over the last 13 or 14 months, it's only been dog and pony shows. Yeah. And um, Marty Markowitz is quite the ringmaster 
of those mm -hmm. shows. In particular, um, Jim Stuckey and the Forest City Ratner people will show up mm -hmm. and they will be completely unresponsive to the community in the audience. They will refuse to take questions or they'll take written questions mm -hmm. um, and they'll give an answer and there's no chance for the, for the public to really follow up. Community yeah. boards, a lot of community board members have been terrific on this issue. Mm -hmm. Some of the leadership, not so much. Um, well, let's go into what is the end game um, that's being imagined by yourself as well as by the developers. If they uh, uh, is there end game to um, finally um, get this thing going in two years or in a year in, in terms of getting it, it finalized? And what is the end game of the opponents? Are you going to be satisfied by just putting up a, a, a token show, or are you going to try to are you going for victory? You have to go for victory. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're in it for a token show, you might as well be the dog and pony people. Yeah, you know, you have to win. And the thing about this thing in Brooklyn in particular is that it's, it will set such a nasty, nasty precedent on a, on a national level if this thing is allowed to go through because it's usurping city council control, it's usurping the public's input via community boards and just from letters and so forth, and it's really changing the way that business on a huge scale do goes. Um, our end game is that we recognize the genie's out of the bottle. There's going to be development at this site, it's a gold mine. Same with the Hudson Yards on the west side of Manhattan. So the end game is to get a development there that is actually gonna work for the community, it takes the community's yeah. input. There's a, th a thing called the Unity Plan. Marshall Brown, the, an urban planner, has done a workshop with Letitia James and mm -hmm. hundreds of people have given the community input and he has a plan mm -hmm. that will has the same density of housing, more places for people to work mm -hmm. in retail in this site and doesn't take anybody's homes, just doesn't have an arena that nobody needs. So the end game is to try and get something like that in the site okay. and not have ourselves run over by the likes of Bruce Ratner. Very well. Uh, so one last question here, I, uh, I guess a minute or so for this um, topic is, uh, you just started to, to touch upon it, but your alternative, uh, you're talking about an alternative to the Ratner plant where the residents keep their, their housing and the stadium still gets built? No, no, no stadium. Okay, no stadium. Okay, that's the name of the project. <laughs> and, um, where does the stadium go to any other location in the city? Uh, that, that, that have you helped out in, in suggesting other sites, for example? It's not for us to suggest other sites because then what you do is you turn it into a NIMBY issue. Mm -hmm. And people out there on TV land have to understand that um, our organization developed on Destroy Brooklyn, Prospect High Section, the whole coalition, we're not doing this because of NIMBY purposes. We mm -hmm. wouldn't wish this on our worst neighborhoods in the city, in our worst Very enemies. Well. We just don't want it. If a neighborhood wants a stadium, great. If Bruce Ratner wants to pay to buy empty land and put a stadium there, uh -huh. great. But we don't want it here. I think that's the way to, to leave it there. Leave people in their homes and leave the developers to find a spot where they can build, where they can pay for it and others um, uh, will not be inconvenienced and, or lose their property or and property rights. I, I want to move from this into um, a, a message for uh, supporters of the Libertarian Party in New York and in the New York metropolitan area and, and region, uh, instead of the elegant terms I would normally use to discuss the, the, the party, uh, I will simply say our party needs money. Let's just go to the bottom line here. We need support from, from you to, in order to put on um, projects like this and find individuals who will be on shows like this and also to perform um, the kind of activism that will energize more people who are pro-liberty in New York. Uh, go to our website for LPNY at ny.lpn.org. That is the site that gives you all the information about our current activities. There's a click and pledge uh, section of that uh, website uh, that's received when you go right to it, which will allow you to uh, begin a donation, either a one-time donation or, or set up a monthly pledge plan. Uh, where you will give what is necessary uh, to restore liberty in this uh, city and state. Uh, we also have local organizations or affiliates that are also active. I, I heartily recommend that you attend the meetings of the Manhattan LP, uh, which uh, is thriving and doing lots of great things. Their website is manhattanlp.org. It's a fantastic um, uh, resource, uh, you could you go to that site and it'll give you all the information about their meeting locations, topics, and scheduled activities. And also in Queens, we have uh, an active Queens organization in Astoria, it meets, meets there um, faithfully every sad, second Saturday for years, um, lpqc.org. In fact, the uh, upcoming uh, 
five borough uh, meeting to nominate citywide candidates will be at the Queens location. Uh, please contact um, LPQC um, for details. And uh, if you're a Libertarian um, um, Party member already, we'll, there'll be a mailing and uh, announcements about that upcoming convention. Uh, so now I would like to go into our second topic, which is another ETS topic, uh, only we just take off the end, we just put a J on it, move over to another borough. We're in Manhattan now, and there is a very complicated uh, struggle going on to build or offer ideas for developing that uh, west side area um, in Midtown uh, to accommodate a jet stadium or, if you go with Madison Square Gardens, um, uh, plans a different kind of facility altogether for housing and uh, other projects. And some people want a combo thing where you get a stadium and a huge um, in tra transportation infrastructure and housing and retail uh, complex. Uh, what is your um, take on that whole issue at this point? Well, the thing about these two projects is that you, 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 you put it as a complexity. I mm -hmm. see it in very simple terms. Mm -hmm. They're both land grabs. Yeah. They're both billions and billions of dollars for mm -hmm. wealthy people um, who, in the latter case, with the owner of the New York Jets, Woody Johnson, he's a pharmaceutical heir who bought a football team, mm -hmm. and this is the guy that the city of New York is charging with developing this massive parcel of land mm -hmm. at great cost to the public so he can have a football stadium. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to get the Olympics. The Olympics aren't coming here. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when a guy like Jay Kriegel or um, Dan Doktorov say what they say about the need for this thing, mm -hmm. they're liars. And they're liars like Bruce Ratner is a liar um, mm -hmm. when it comes to saying why the community needs these things. Well, I, I actually do agree with you. I, I was just setting it up for the rest of the public who may approach it that way based on the way it's purported. Uh, but um, my understanding is that there's been something like $20 billion uh, spent over the last few years by various municipalities in building these uh, huge, modern, more modern stadiums and the traffic infrastructure around it mm -hmm. uh, to basically accommodate uh, lining the pockets of the fat cats who should have paid for it all by themselves uh, to begin with. I, I, I find it's very bizarre, you know, that, that we would in socialize the ex development expenses of all these um, corporate um, entities and, and sports franchises so that they can um, maximize and privatize the profits they're going to get out of the facility that, that we gift to them as a result of this. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact numbers for, for this project uh, in terms of the bids, whatever, but is it 400 million or billion or is it 900? Well, that's, that's the beauty of the thing. <laughs> the numbers change, like the weather outside has changed the last few days here in New York. The thing is about this is that um, the, the Jets want to spend $100 million and actually mm -hmm. about $30 million when it really comes down to just their parcel. Cablevision wants to spend $600 million. There's a, um, a power plant company that wants to spend $700 million. I, you know, I think the thing is um, these are numbers that are going to change. These are numbers that are going to shortchange the public ultimately. Um, and um, I think one thing the public has to realize about this kind of thing is that, as I said before, the genie's out of the bottle on both these sites. There are going to be jobs. Someone's going to build there. Mm -hmm. There are going to be plenty of jobs. There are going to be plenty of construction yeah. jobs and permanent jobs. And there's going to be some affordable housing, though no matter what goes up, it's not going to be as much affordable housing mm -hmm. as a guy like Bruce Ratner will have the community believe, a guy like um, Woody Johnson might have or Dr. Off might have people yeah. believe in Manhattan. And people have to understand that what you need to do is get the best development there, again, for the community. And um, when, again, when the city of New York says, well, we need Woody Johnson to build this because no one else is going to build there. Well, clearly someone's going to build there. Yep. We need Bruce Ratner. Is that the best New York can do? We have one pharmaceutical heir mm -hmm. and one Cleveland uh, real estate magnet. Those are the only two people who can build our city? And it's, it's a crazy way to... to it, it's a slap in the face it, to the people of New York it's City. It's a peculiar New York tradition. It seems like a hundred years ago or whatever it was, we were talking about Robert Moses building everything, and, and, and he was the only guy who could be commissioned to do it. And, and he built it according to his biases and his ruthlessness. Uh, and now we, we, we uh, in the modern era, when we're supposed to be enlightened, we still appoint this overlord or that uh, go-to uh, guy or gal to, to be the, the head of these kind of um, boondoggles. Because we let them. I'm sorry yeah. to jump in. Because we let them. And one of the problems with both these projects um, is that the city council, certainly in the case of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. has really recused themselves from the procedure and let a state 
oversight process takeover, which yeah. is far less stringent, far less mm -hmm. democratic. And Giffen Miller, to his credit, just announced that he's going to make sure that um, these pilot um, funding proposals um, that come in, that they're, they're, they're going to be under city council scrutiny. We'll see if he can get it passed through, but that's important. Okay. Well, let's go back to the issue about, you know, how this will benefit. You know, into, what do you think of the ancient chant of the stadium will pay for itself as a means of uh, justifying uh, constructing and, and having taxpayers pay for uh, the Jet Stadium? It's, um, what's the word? It's crap. All it's right. um, It's countless studies I cannot begin to name in this segment mm -hmm. all the studies that have been done that prove that stadiums do not pay for themselves and when they're funded by something like tax increment financing or pilot mm -hmm. programs if they don't operate in the black mm -hmm. then the municipality the state the county is left holding the bag for that yeah. until they do start operating um, the only one of the greatest mm -hmm. sports economists of our time Andrew Zimbalist Mm -hmm. is a guy who for 20 years has been railing against cities financing stadia and arenas yeah. and he's just been hired by Bruce Ratner to write a pro Bruce Ratner arena thing so um, so you know you take that as you will but mm -hmm. the fact is they don't make money they've never made money if they made money anyone who could afford to build a stadium would be building it reaping the profits the yeah. fact that owners go to cities to buy mm -hmm. to build them shows yeah. how unprofitable they are yeah um, it this is uh, in terms of the two issues in um, eminent domain abuse and corporate welfare. Um, it seems like Net Stadium, uh, on the surface, is more clearly an example of the land grab problem, and this side it seems to be more clearly on the uh, corporate uh, welfare abuse end. Uh, but there is an element of both issues in both oh, of them. Sure, yeah. And, um, I, I wanted to, 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 to go to mention that I'm also aware, of, like a Heartland um, Institute um, study that showed um, across. Uh, dozens of different projects of this sort and stadiums being built around the municipalities around the country, uh, there was, was no net employment growth that came out of it. Uh, there was a, another organization, I forget the, uh, the name exactly, but they, they found almost no growth or negligible growth coming for the municipality that, that, that put up the money. There was just basically a money pit um, uh, or a neutral situation that, that, that never benefited the taxpayers who put the money into it. Uh, but it sure as heck benefited the people who, uh, the overlord, the, the owner of the franchise, etc., who uh, now has all the skyboxes they need to uh, to maximize their profit out of in a modern stadium. Um, well, see, it's not it's not just stadiums that do that. Metro Tech in Brooklyn mm -hmm. was heralded as this thing that was going to provide tons of jobs for people in the community. For mm -hmm. instance, people in the Ingersoll Farragut houses. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the unemployment rate, which is desperate there, 50-60% mm -hmm. for men there, mm -hmm. it's the same. It's the yeah. same all these years down the road from Metro Tech. And um, when they say jobs are coming in, it's not jobs, new jobs that are coming in. Right. It's jobs that already exist in other parts of the city that are coming in. So it's not right. even like the tax base grows that much. Mm -hmm. And then when you have all the tax abatements that mm -hmm. like Gratner will have from Metro Tech or the Atlantic Center Mall, yeah. Um, you really see how little money is generated. So it's, mm -hmm. you're right about stadiums, but it's not just stadiums that results in this. Yeah, I've never understood that argument for the building because the people who construct the place uh, clearly are people who are like trade people who are, have to be selected to do it um, who, based on their ability to do it and, and stay within budget and all that stuff. Uh, and it's not going to be the guy off the street. And then the person who's going to be the ongoing you know, employee base uh, that operates the facility uh, not going to be the guy off the street it's, or a gal off. It's going to be somebody who's qualified to do the individual job. And well, they're going to open up the resume um, request line from across the country for people who want to take some of the more lucrative positions. And that's a very disingenuous thing that Bruce Ratner is doing is he's trying to sell people in Brooklyn, especially the working mm -hmm. poor and particularly communities of color, on the idea that there are going to be thousands of jobs for them. And mm -hmm. in fact, that is just not true and you're going to have this situation where people are going to be divided they're going to fight against each other and you know the fact that he's throwing a racial divide into this thing is like really bad news right in the old days they used to call something like this uh, a government make work project uh, and and they mostly were bland uh, terrible ideas people didn't want to actually continue to work in them anyway uh, but this kind of thing seems to be catch fire when it comes to making uh, creating a stadium because everybody's excited about sports and the sports team occupying an arena or perhaps the Olympics occupying an, an arena. Uh, and I, I, I wonder why there's no seeing through um, this 
you know, this, this pretty package that's being presented to people for, for what is essentially just, the, you know, I said, a government boondoggle make work project. It is one of the great mysteries of all time mm -hmm. that politicians who know better on any other issue will get completely seduced mm -hmm. by stadiums. It happens mm -hmm. time and again. Stadiums are the one. And Bruce Ratner, he may be evil and insensitive to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. but he is not stupid. And he recognized that mm -hmm. he was never going to get a massive 17 building project that would destroy these neighborhoods in Brooklyn yeah. ever approved if he didn't include a stadium with it. That's why he overpaid badly for the Nets, have run him into the ground, and now he's using that as an excuse to get all this other stuff. No one ever talks about the 17 no. buildings. It's just this arena. Mm -hmm. It is a mystery. It's like you have to take politicians and mm -hmm. lash them. It's like sirens are calling them. And this leads to my final point because we're down to like the last minute or so where there's something that um, like Chris Matthews said on an episode of Cross, uh, excuse me, um, Chris Hardball. Matthews' show, Hardball or his, his Sunday show, mm -hmm. where he mentioned that this is sort of like modern Egypt with modern pharaohs who are, whether they're the Bloombergs or the Ratners or the, uh, the Clintons with the, his humongous Clinton library, sure. um, creating these huge institutional monuments as a kind of uh, way of people paying homage to uh, their financial and, and political uh, greatness. And uh, I get the impression that a lot of these structures are being um, pushed in order for Bloomberg to, for example, say he, he really revitalize the city and put these huge monuments up, uh, pyramid, modern pyramids. To it's the legacy thing, sure, sure. Yeah. And, and I mean, and, and the thing is that when you look at these ancient cultures, the only things that seem to survive are the great burial grounds for the leaders and the stadiums of that culture. Those are the only things seemingly left standing. Oh, yeah, I, and I mentioned to you earlier uh, that I think of it more of it in terms of the old um, poem Ozymandias with uh, you know, uh, the statue eventually, uh, and the monument eventually just breaks down and weathers away with er erodes with time, and all he got is two trunkless legs of stone at the mm -hmm. end, and that's all these stadiums will end up being in the long run. I think of it in the words of Joe Strummer, the, the more recent poet who said, kick over the wall, cause governments to fall, how can you refuse it? And that's something that the people of Brooklyn and Manhattan, New York City and State are gonna have to do here. On that note, I'd like to thank Scott M. X. Turner for uh, his illuminating comments on both these controversies. And uh, thank you for listening and watching. And I welcome you to come again to uh, watch another episode of Hard Fire. It is one of the great mysteries of all time mm -hmm. that politicians who know better on any other issue will get completely seduced. Mm -hmm by stadiums. It happens time and again. Stadiums are the one. And Bruce Ratner, he may be evil and insensitive to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. but he is not stupid. And he recognized that mm -hmm. he was never going to get a massive 17 building project that would destroy these neighborhoods in Brooklyn yeah. ever approved if he didn't include a stadium with it. That's why he overpaid badly for the Nets, have run him into the ground, and now he's using that as an excuse to get all this other stuff. No one ever talks about the 17 yeah. buildings. It's just this arena. Mm -hmm. It is a mystery. It's like you have to take politicians and mm -hmm. lash them. It's like sirens are calling them.